Acts 27 verses 1 to 12. When it was decided that we would sail for Italy, Paul and some other prisoners were handed over to a centurion named Julius, who belonged to the Imperial Regiment. We boarded the ship from Adrantium, about to sail for ports along the coast of the province of Asia, and we put out to sea. Aristarchus, a Macedonian from Thessalonica, was with us. The next day we landed at Sidon, and Julius, in kindness to Paul, allowed him to go to his friends so they might provide for his needs. From there we put out to sea again and passed to the lee of Cyprus because the winds were against us. When we had sailed across the open sea off the coast of Cilicia and Pamphylia, we landed at Myra in Lycia. There the centurion found an Alexandrian ship sailing for Italy and put us on board. We made slow headway for many days and had difficulty arriving off Cnidus. When the wind did not allow us to hold our course, we sailed to the lee of Crete opposite Salmoni. We moved along the coast with difficulty and came to a place called Fair Havens near the town of Lacia. Much time had been lost and sailing had already become dangerous because by now it was after the fast. So Paul warned them, Men, I can see that our voyage is going to be disastrous and bring great loss to ship and cargo and to our own lives also. But the centurion, instead of listening to what Paul said, followed the advice of the pilot and of the owner of the ship. Since the harbour was unsuitable to winter in, the majority decided that we should sail on, hoping to reach Phoenix and winter there. This, har this was a harbour in Crete, facing both southwest and northwest. Well, for a um, history and travel fan like myself, this is a really interesting, fascinating passage. Um, and I, I really loved kind of looking into it a bit further. Now, the story so far is that Paul, who was a Roman citizen, had been accused by the Jews of many things, of blasphemy amongst other things and causing riots, etc. And so he... Um, as was his right, had appealed to go before the emperor in Rome um, to make his case. And so this is the, the beginning of his journey to Rome. And uh, we see here, don't we, how he was assigned a, a centurion, a man named Julius, who was part of the Imperial Regiment. Now, this was a man of great authority. This was a man, the Imperial Regiment were um, actually under the emperor's personal command. Um, so this this was a, a, a you know not this person was not insignificant in the Roman army, and we see that they boarded the ship at Adrantium, uh, which is now part of modern day Turkey, and they they sailed uh, you know kind of a a, a, tort a a long torturous route if you like from uh, through the Mediterranean. And it's quite fascinating, isn't it, to see how the travel and trade of those days kind of happened. They picked up a ship that was coming from Alexandria. Um, going up to Rome and uh, you know we see how it worked and I, I just found it really interesting looking at it and uh, reading about it. Another interesting point is that uh, when Paul spoke up um, it was around the time of the fast. Now that was the fast for the Day of Atonement which the, the Jewish um, obviously uh, celebrated and uh, so that would have been about this kind of time in the year, end of September, early October and um, and obviously the the uh, conditions on the Mediterranean were a lot more treacherous, were becoming a lot more treacherous. There were autumn gales and storms, which is why Paul uh, said what he said. Um, so, you know, fascinating stuff. But what I want to focus on today is uh, verse 10. And uh, I'll read it to you again. And it said, it's Paul speaks up and he says, Men, I can see that our voyage is going to be disastrous and bring great loss to ship and cargo, and to our own lives also. Now, I just was thinking about kind of that kind of conversation that Paul had with the centurion, with the ship's owners, with the pilot, with the ship's captain. And uh, I just thought it was fascinating how he spoke up to authority. And uh, it kind of reminded me of a of some situations that I've dealt with in the past in my workplace where um, I've been I've coached people, um, and 
one of the things that I've coached people on sometimes is is actually is this whole concept of managing up. And what that is 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 speaking truth to power. And uh, you know, maybe talking to a manager or a leader or someone in who's in authority over you and saying, you know, I, I don't know if this is going to work or I don't know if, if this is the right course of action. And it's how to do that in a respectful but truth-filled manner, you know, and, uh, you know, not in a way, not in a rude or, or um, disruptive way, but in a way that is constructive. And uh, I just thought how Paul handled this situation was amazing, was exemplary. And, and it made me start to, start to think about, well, what does the Bible say about speaking truth to power? and uh, speaking up in the workplace or maybe at any, in any situation, in any context. And, uh, it, you know, you might have to deal with a difficult boss, a difficult government, you know, someone in authority over you, a difficult leader. And how do you do that in a manner that is godly and right before in God's eyes? And the Bible does actually talk quite a lot about this. And so there's a few things that I just wanted to focus on, a few verses, a few thoughts, just want to give them to you this morning as food for thought, something to think about as you go into your working week or your week at home or whatever you're doing. You know, it, it, I think this applies to us in every situation. The first uh, go-to verse, if you like, in on this subject of speaking truth to power, is this uh, is Romans thirteen verse one to two, where Paul, and if you remember that this was in the context of. Uh, the Romans, the Roman church was under the authority of the, the Emperor Nero, who was at best a, uh, a poor leader. At worst, he was a maniac, a murderer, a nasty piece of work. And uh, so Paul, in that context, spoke to the Roman church and said that actually all authority is God ordained. And I don't understand that. And Paul doesn't, didn't understand that probably. But he said it is nevertheless. And so we need to do our best to submit to authority and to honour God in how we treat authority. So another uh, uh, context, another um, verse or story in the Bible is, is the whole thing of, of Jesus, isn't it? And how Jesus obviously is total, is the total authority. He was there, he flung stars into space. And Jesus' example of how he submitted to the will of the Father. And how it says in, uh, in the Bible how he considered equality with God, nothing to be grasped. But he came in human form, in human likeness. And all through Jesus' ministry, he only did what the Father told him to do. Jesus was, it was total authority but he was also in total submission he knew what it was to humble himself and be submissive to authority and uh, there are certainly times in life aren't there when we do need to speak up to authority if you think about the story of Esther how she was put in the Persian court and she reflected herself I was put here um, to speak truth to power I was I was here to for the saving of many lives and uh, she was put in that position for such a time as that, as this, to save many lives. Or you think about how Jesus spoke up uh, to the Pharisees in defence of poor, needy people who needed healing. You know, he, 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 he said, you know, of course I'm going to heal them on the Sabbath. They, that, that's their, their need, you know. And he spoke up to the Pharisees who were kind of coming in a self-righteous religious manner. Or Proverbs 31, verse 8, where it says, Speak up for those who cannot speak up for themselves. For the, um, speak up for the rights of all who are destitute. The Bible is clear that there are times when we need to speak up, when we need to speak truth. We need to speak truth to authority. But the Bible also gives us some really good uh, ways of how we can do this in a godly manner. In Ephesians 4, verse 15, um, it talks about how we should speak the truth in love. It is possible to speak to authority in a respectful, in a loving, in a gracious way. In um, Colossians 3, verse 23, Paul talks about how actually when we work, we work for the Lord, don't we? We are doing, we are serving our master, the Lord, first and foremost. 
And so we have a duty, a responsibility to do things in a godly manner. Um, in Philippians, Paul talks about how we should let our reasonableness be shown to all people. People should look at us as employees or as people under authority and say they're reasonable and how they deal with things is reasonable. And so just finishing really, you know, Paul spoke up, didn't he? And uh, he did what was right, but he did it in a respectful way. And he didn't then kind of, when they didn't do what he said, say, oh, I told you so, oh, come on, you know, what are you doing? No, he didn't. He left it with them and he left it with God. And he let God, God's will, take precedent. So just some thoughts there about speaking up to authority, about speaking truth to power. Have a great day. Thanks. Thank you.